ናቸው አንዳንድ ስጦኝና አት ሲሪየስ ማተር ዘት አውድ ላይክ ቱ ስታርት ኢትስ ቬሪ ሲሪየስ ጊቭ ሚ አ ቢት ኦፍ ሳይን ዉድ ዩ ሊሰን ቱ ሚ አይ አም ዱኢንግ ኢት ፐርፐዝ ኢን እንግሊሽ ቢኮዝ ዚስ ሺንግ ሹድ ቢ ግሎባል ኤንድ ኢት ሹድ ጎ ቱ ዩሮፒያንስ ኤንድ አሜሪካንስ ኤንድ ካናዲያንስ ዱ ዩ ሊሰን ቱ ሚ Do you listen to me is that right voice am i loud enough to be listened give me a mark okay am i right am i listened am i at the right volume to be talking because i will be talking in english uh because uh the matter is so serious in the face of politically correct global world my name is dr jamal mohammed i'm an ethiopian who had served 10 years in a prison for politics and then legally migrated to uk and now i'm found i am in manchester stockport and this video i'm making is quite legal reasonably understood and i will be accountable to whatever way i'm saying whatever and if somebody would be confident and contacted me it can be used even for legal purpose the reason why i'm just doing this video in english is because the magnitude of the problem in ethiopia in which the government is struggling with its army to control an effort of ethnic cleansing human right violation and genocide while the world is watching little boys and girls who are pronouncing it as if it is a joke in the western world in uk london in Minneapolis United States of America in Paris France also in some cities of Canada this is a serious matter and at this very edge of mind there is no reason why i don't understand when the magnitude of a problem is so serious and the world is watching and playing the game of political correctness with thugs who don't understand the magnitude of the mistake they are doing and the police officers i have seen in london i know they are disciplined i know they are professionally updated and of global standard but the way they are dealing with people who are encouraging and propagandizing ethnic cleansing in Ethiopia that is not the way they should be dealt with in London they should be told and talked with the right information and it had just been almost one month or more than one month this demonstration had started and the western world should give a value and credibility what is going on why are these people demonstrating so passionately and in large number why is so much is going on in ethiopia what is the connection between the two if it could have been some western countries this thing would be called a serious matter to be dealt with with all the force it needs to protect the innocent lives but since it is an african life an ethiopian life and it is the life of the poor ethiopians and oromo samara and tigris and guragis in ethiopia who dies of our action of political correctness and potential criminals who are galloping on the streets as if nothing had happened as if they had done nothing in ethiopia I'm talking this with the knowledge of a medical doctor background who had spent 10 years in a prison 
and I know how crimes were done. And then I did all my best for that crime I saw in a prison not to be repeated again in the name of Oromo. It is repeated. And this is repeated quite boldly now, arrogantly and proudly, because it has got the cover of a social media and also augmented by a media called OMN. This is for me, this is my media, thanks to science and technology, and I use it very responsibly. I use it for the sake of protecting life and propagating knowledge, humanity, prosperity, peace and security, and never ever to abuse anybody for any reason. But as human beings, sometimes I might talk hard and say hard whenever something is wrong going on and nobody would pay an attention. So the government in Ethiopia is doing, was doing with a very disciplined army which are still under criticism from human rights activism. And I will not ever, ever say that should not be done. It should be done fairly and squarely the way it should serve the larger majority, not the vocal minority who are so present all over the place, all over the media, around the Chovele, around BBC, around VOA or on social medias. The poor are dying for nobody had said quite strongly and with a sufficient word it deserves to be told. Neither the Ethiopian government has done, nor the opposition would do it, and nor any of us who are in the diaspora would do because we have got a divided heart of fear of we ourselves might have been, or we might just be a victim of the targery that is going on so rampant, uncontrolled, undisciplined, and so sad to watch it on the Western street. I myself had received a warning to kill me on this very mobile I'm talking through. To the same warning that has killed an artist in Ethiopia, it was a pattern for the last three, four decades, and we kept silent just because nobody likes really to talk against his own people, and it takes a big of heart, a lot of understanding, a lot of tolerance, which I call it, I tolerated for more than 30 years, and now we should put this to an end with the rationality and understanding where the logic should take. We as Oromos in Ethiopia, we call ourselves being marginalized and quite like any other thing, this marginalization have evolved over the last 30 years and we are now in a better condition to a level where we have got a prime minister from our own and is one of the best in the world. That is why he was a Nobel Peace Prize winner of 2019. But this couldn't be a solution. Rather, it created an enemy on the Nobel Prize winner, as I have just seen over the last 30 years. Jealousy is the worst, the biggest enemy among Oromos against themselves. They are their own, or we are our own worst enemies. No one, I would point my finger now. If we are up to our standard of bravery, which we had in the history, we would not be crying. And hence, the cry, the complaint, the finger pointing is much more exaggerated now when the prime minister is one of them or one of the Oromos. They couldn't accept him because of, I'll nail it down here, because of the clan problem among us, we Oromos. 
Dr. Abi Ahmad, the Nobel Prize winner and the current Prime Minister, charismatic and a man of high integrity, no one in this world, no dictator had ever been abused and an effort to eliminate had been carried out. All sorts of propaganda was done against him and they also tried to physically eliminate him. I've never worked with this man and neither am a member of his party. I'm just in UK, a former OLF who had just said crime is enough for me for what I have seen in a prison. And so the reason why I'm making the video is for all Ethiopians, Oromos, Amharas, or any reasonable group to take this video to politicians, councillors, policemen in the West, either in UK, either in Europe. I can be contacted on my address and I can explain what I am saying. You can take it into a French police, you can take it to a UK police, because really I'm not somebody who is so quite really interested in talking to people around and running around. It's not, whereas this social media should be my force through which I can put, I, I can have my input to save lives in Ethiopia and to put a calmness on what is going on. There is a horrendous crime of ethnic cleansing closer to genocide going on in Ethiopia. And the source, the head, the fountain head is from United States activist Oromos, which were here as an immigrant. Most of them even illegal. Some of them legal. But But they turned out to be antagonizing these very stupid creatures. But they allied, they allied the former migrants of Romo who came all to UK, those who came to Europe or France or United States or Canada or Australia, they were blaming a government in power run by TPLF or Tigray Liberation Front that was being ousted from power by the current government. Now, the immigrants have turned to be friends, comrades in arms with the people they were blaming to get migration to United States, to Canada, to Australia, to UK, and to Europe. They gang up with their former enemy against which they were complaining to get the immigration status here positive. Now, the paradox, they are uniting and fighting a Nobel Prize winner, Prime Minister, who is much more democratic than any other leader in the history of Ethiopia. Why? Majority of the immigrants who came to the West are from certain clans, much more tribal, much more economical, much more unpolitical, much more uneducated, much more uncultured, a bit religious, even a fake religion. This ethnic group, or this not ethnic group, this clan, a clan among Oromo, had not accepted another clan of Oromo, which is from Jimma, a former kingdom which has got much more higher cultural understanding among us. So this is not an Oromo issue. This is a clan issue between Oromos. It is not 
Amhara against Oromo or Oromo against Amhara. It is an Oromo clan creating a mess in Ethiopia while they are fighting in between each other. And this is emboldened, empowered, enriched, organized, financialized, and also owned a media called OMN in the West. This clannish, uncivilized, uncultured, semi-terrorist group got a power from immigration. They got the money, they got the power, then they have controlled the Western migration, they are enriched, then they wanted to control the government machine. And they came up with a leader, an activist, I call him the creature of a Facebook. I repeat, they got an activist trained in California University, quite really clever, but not honest, and with the poorest standard on earth. And this tribal group of Oromo, who is not yet well grown up to Oromo standard, which I call myself proud Oromo, they have not grown up to the standard of we, the people of Oromo, who created, stabilized Ethiopia. And this group, which is emboldened in the Western country, is, fight, is biting the feeding hand in the West. Here I'm talking because of my value as an Oromo, as an Ethiopian, as an African, as well as I'm a worldly citizen, and I want to do kind from within the West. So, what is happening? The political correctness in the United States the political correctness in the United Kingdom, and the way the police are managing this thing, and they are not doing any effort to find an evidence why this all month long demonstration. It was not democratic, it is not their right, it is not fair, it is all an effort that the demonstrators are making to sink, to sink, I repeat it, and to silence the justice of killing an artist called Hachalu. They and their activists and other political opposition with those who were ousted from the power organized initially character assassinating on social media. There are evidences of videos of how they were character assassinating the activists then they physically eliminated him by killing. They tried to make it look like that it is our traditional political opponents who killed him. Because they have sent the video to me, they were terrorizing me, they were terrorizing the artist, and they have killed much more, and I know the experience. I have no doubt it is this group who has committed the crime. Even I was suggesting, why not Scotland Yard be involved in the investigation, just really for the matter of clarity, or FBI even involved in how to investigate this crime. It was all an effort to denounce and to make the Nobel Prize winner look a dictator. The activist now in detention said Winning a Nobel Prize is like wearing a white wool. So he said, we can make the white wool dirty. That is what he said. It is on his own word. And so part of killing Hachalu was an effort made to make the white wool look dirty. They campaigned against him immensely on their media called OMN, which I call it, or this is quite media is equivalent to an media that mediated a genocide in Rwanda. It was for good reason that Ethiopian government had just stopped their license there. But because of the political correctness, this propaganda machine is spewing throwing all its venoms, hatred, 
against certain group called, they call them Naftanya. Naftanya is synonymous to mean, I will explain the word Naftanya. Naftanya is to mean, Naft is an arm, it is an arm. Naftanya means an armed. Whereas they are not using it with this very original meaning of Naftanya. They use it the second meaning because like any other word, Naftanya is good. Might have one or two words. It is to mean Amhara. And I used to oppose them politically, honestly, but I don't cleanse them because look, this is a white people here in front of me and the white people behind me. On top it is a brown and on my down it's a black man. While I am living in such a world, there is no way for me to eliminate Amhara, Grage, or any other person from the very land the Oromos are living in. They are living in the West, using the Western liberal democracy, and they are practicing fascistic politics, a communistic propaganda in our country. So, any police, I, mean, I, I saw today, unprofessional, untrained journalist, faking as a journalist in Minneapolis, talking either to a politician, a counselor, or anyhow, someone as a public servant. I can tell you one thing, you Western people are honest, and you take people for granted because you respect yourself, you respect us, and you listen to us. But that is misunderstood by illiterate and people without gratitude. They call you, you are gullibles. I repeat it. The journalist who was talking to a politician in Minneapolis, I can tell you, as a doctor, as someone also with a deeper understanding of human psychology, he was talking to her as if he was fooling her. They call the West, or they call it in Amharic language, the Ferengis are fools, they call them, or the white man is fool. A white man is not fool for me. A white man is sympathetic, understanding, and he controls his emotion and he understands you. And even if he might not like to understand you, he will not show the emotion, and it is because they control their emotion, and the fools have misunderstood it and become emboldened. I repeat it. If they are emboldened by the politeness of what a London police was showing to thugs who came here as illegal migrants because they were beneficiary of the TPLF government and their moms and their dads were being paid well or bribed or did something illegal to pay for their human trafficking. All whom I saw in London today, I can tell you, 95% of them are sons and daughters of rich people who worked for TPLF. That is why they come here. No poor child comes to UK. No poor child's family comes to Europe. It is rich family children with corrupt background who come and they are repeating that here because power is money in Africa. Their mom and dads were corrupt at home. They gave them money. They come here and they are practicing corrupt politics because OMN was helping them to promote them. OMN was encouraging human trafficking and I do have an evidence how OMN was benefiting from human traffickers and drug lords. OMN is made up of drug lords called chat and human trafficking in the West. And they are encouraging human trafficking now. I am here legally. I wish I would be in my country and make the West my friend and do, had I not having my own problem. You are so great, but the fools, the illiterate, criminal-minded people who use crime to get here, get encouraged to do crime, and they are killing our people at home. Help Ethiopia, 
help the people. The police stop being politically correct to thugs who are encouraging genocide in our country. The police in UK, the police in Canada, the police in United States of America, the demonstrators are not Democrats. They are practicing fascistic activity in their own country. I am responsible for what I'm saying. I'm talking it with an experience of more than 30 years, seeing, tolerating, trying to correct all this crime. It came now exploding. And at this very age, I don't expect anybody to do any better. We should stop them helping the government helping an Ethiopian army, helping the Ethiopian police, helping the people, and talking to us, to us, who knows what we are talking, responsible. I'm talking against my own people, if you understand the intensity of what I'm talking. I am an Oromo, I'm talking against the Oromos. They are clannish, I call myself civilized and grown up. So, I don't side with them. I don't side with criminality in my own ethnicity. Never, ever. I can side with anybody who is right, and my color is not my issue. My character is the most important thing. I call myself blacker than the black, whiter than the white black man. Come on, stop, stop, stop laying down whenever a black does a crime against a black. This crime would not be done against Europe from Africa. This crime cannot be done against Europe from Middle East. This crime cannot be done against Europe from Afghanistan. This crime cannot be done to anybody's country in Europe from anywhere on earth. Why would it be done from Europe? Why would it be done to from Canada? Why would it be done from Australia? Why would it be done to any African country? While they are, you are politically correct. Why? It is a black killing a black. You don't care. Politically correct. Sometimes in America, the election might affect the crime. I am the man of law and order, whether black or white. But that is what lets me to live in this very world. So there is one big Western accomplice with the crime going on, because they have not investigated, they have not tried to get to get to the root of the matter and stop the tags on the street, which are emboldened. When they are emboldened here, the stooges at home get emboldened and kill more and burn more house. Please stop the political correctness and deal with the real issue. UK police, United States police, the politicians, even the campaigners, the councillors, whoever watch this lesson, you are playing the game. An African life there doesn't matter. Honestly, I'm all lives matter person. I repeat it, I'm all lives matter person. But what I'm watching, no one, no one, no one would do the crime against UK against the United States doing what the thugs here are doing from Ethiopia. You'd stop them in one day. Why to the poor country, to the poor prime minister, who is non-corrupt, that's why we support him. The one criteria in African setup, just really we like somebody who don't steal us. He doesn't steal us. I hate and I don't like the activist because he's a thief intoxicated with money and his one million or over one million Facebook subscribers is because he uses religion. I will tell you. The activist or the creature of Facebook, he uses religion, though he's not religious. He uses clan, though we don't know even what clan is he. And he's a mafia of this global world empowered by social media, not by talent or not by character. And he was making all sorts of biased information on the media. And now the journalist in Minnesota 
What medical knowledge does he have to talk about an illness of a prisoner in Ethiopia? He doesn't have. I can tell you, the activist in Ethiopia is faking an illness. For me, it is a wastage of a resource. If I would be a doctor, I would just be there and I can understand him. But in African setup, we don't tolerate an abuse of any kind because they have got just a limited resource. And hence, an illness should not be politicized. He should get a fair treatment, but people are being killed or the poor died because he just faked to be sick. He faked to be sick, nobody knows. There are lawyers here in London talking as if they know just first-hand information. And shameful, somebody educated here is even disinforming the public. The great culture in UK should be reflected also when we talk to Ethiopians, not to UK students only. And we should not fake it. And hence, the way I respect this country, the way I respect the Western civilization is by just really making myself a bit global, tolerant, and somebody who understands fairly the rule of law. The one difference between Africa and Europe is for me is the Europeans respect the rule of law or the Northern Americans respect of the rule of law and things are taken care of according to the law. But in African setup, nobody respects the rule of law. Where I still have had first hand information. When it is a black killing black, really, Western police is not paying attention. I will say this because of this one man's cry. It is the activists and his group who are being suspected of doing the crime, and that crime was being sent to me, and a policeman can investigate my mobile. I have got a warning. And all the finger pointers. So I do give that to the law, the due process of the law, to carry out its investigation and for the judge to decide. But all the fingers show to the opposition of Abi Ahmed much more than anybody else because I read pattern and all the pattern go that way. Because the artist was quite authentic, outspoken, and somebody who was just really the right person on his own way, and no activist he worships, no politician he worships. He is a king by his own right. That's why he was killed. Just somebody like me. I'm an Azerachalu. Nobody subjugates me. And hence, anybody, an Ethiopian, a Noromo, take this video, take this video. My name is Jamal. I'm a former medical doctor. I stayed in a prison for 10 years. Nobody knows as much as I know the genesis of crime, how it was done in the name of Oromos. OMN is lying. It is shameful that it is spewing its propaganda, communistic propaganda or fascistic propaganda from Minneapolis. That is shameful to that wonderful nation I always appreciate from a distance. Please use it. Use my contact. Let them talk to me because I can talk so fluently and explain why I am talking. This can, even for this, if I, any of this video would take me to court, I can go. Use it. Let us do it because we are not corrupt and we, I, you see, we can't have a television. It is a stooge, it is a tags who has got television. It is a fake group who has got television. It is a people who don't repeat one word, who doesn't know what has happened. Those who came to become an Oromo politician in diaspora after being a scholarship student. I know one, one guy here in London who talks as if he's a big politician, while he's not. He's just a member of a former government. He was just in the, in the, in the, in the party of Abi Ahmed, the Nobel Prize winner. Now he's fighting Abi Ahmed from here. These are fake people. They can't even look into our eyes. So talk, 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 and fight hard. United we shall win them. We can bring them to justice for the sake of our unity. We are stronger together. And power is within truth, not number. Because I know the genesis of crime. How was crime generated in diaspora? 
how was the religion used, how were the clans used, how was the campaign were against us and many other innocent Oromos who were higher than the clans. Now it is a clan propaganda machine. I repeat it, OMN is a clan propaganda machine. Sometimes it is for economic migrants, sometimes it's for criminals, and sometimes for its uh, undertone. It's the undertone of OMN is religion and region. And there is specific et clan group who subscribes to it. Not all of us, no one. It is not our media anymore. It is fake. Anybody can ask me why I call it fake. Anybody. And hence, all honest Ethiopians together, we will beat them like rats. Not rat figuratively, because they are little creatures who use lie and the liberal democracy in the West. I know them in a prison, these people, some of them with me in a prison. They can't even look at you up. They lie 1,000 times. Some of them were spies for TPLF. Those who are now talking against Abiy, where most of them are informers, economic migrants who goes to Ethiopia. And I do have an evidence on video. One of the very activists who is campaigning against Abiy was asking to have a permission to sell a drug called Jima. He was being denied, and then he became an opposition here outside. And many of them are, they just, you know, they have no standard. They are clannish. When you look at them, they put an eyeglass and the hat, and they, when they sit on Facebook, you think, you think that they are some city smart boys. They are not. They are clowns from, from that, that very backward in their mind, barbarians, boorish. That's why they hate the Nobel Prize winner. He said, I am a normal, but I would be impartial to all. I will be good to all. So they said, why don't you do it the way we like? Why don't you repeat the style of the former TPLF regime? They said, he said, no, we are the majority, we are Marwazer, we are cultured, and we don't do that. That is what created an enemy to Dr. Abi Ahmed. And let me stop the video here. Share it, use it, call my name, is my first book name is my name, my address is there, and I am Jamal, even this is the way I look like without my hat. And tell to police, tell to even a congressman, I am much more than mature to talk to any congress, to a member of parliament, or to a police, or to a councillor. Use it. I'm doing this, that's my means. Otherwise, that is the way I'm doing is to save life and to stop crime. Some are using it for crime. Me, I want to use it against crime. Thank you, my Ethiopians and Romos or anyone who had just listened to me. And the purpose of this video is because I have looked at what is going on in Canada. Th because some were being even ev evicted from community. Some were said, you are not a Romo, go away because they support uh, the, the Nobel Prize winner. This is happening all over the place. Some are also asking for families to divorce because somebody should not get married to Abiy Ahmed's supporters. And I fight it, even with my life. That should not happen. The style of how we do politics in the West, and the West don't, one thing, the problem with the West is they don't understand their language. And we know their language and we can translate and we can summarize the meaning of all what the propaganda is to sing. They killed an artist and they wanted to drown or to sing their criminality by mere number and voice. They are the one who are killed. With one hand, they can release political prisoners who are not political prisoners. They are suspects and they have killed dozens of people. That is why they are in a prison and there is no political prisoner in Ethiopia, I can explain it. There are people who are much more than suspects who are detained. The thugs in the diaspora are trying to make, there are people who are untouchable, and there are people who cannot be tried, and there are people who are above the law, including myself, I'm not above the law, including Donald Trump or Prime Minister Boris Johnson, he is not above the law. And this world, we live under the law. That world, is, that is what holds us together. Otherwise, there is no way 
I can live in UK if the way things are happening in Ethiopia is right here in UK, because any nationalist group can come and kill you or burn you. Yes, true. If what is going on in Ethiopia would happen in Ethiopia, a black or brown man cannot live here. If what is happening in Ethiopia should happen in America, no brown, no black you see in America or anywhere else, you, they burn you out. That is what is happening and that is what the politicians, they are standing and talking. The politicians or MEPs in Minneapolis, I saw today on video, she's talking to somebody who is doing crime and taking as fool while she's not and disinforming her to get illegal support. Some is also saying, let us contribute $500,000 so that we lobby in the United States Congress and Senator because money talks. Listen, congressmen, take this video to congressmen, senators. They are saying we buy them. Let me see whether they buy you or whether you are up to the standard of United States value, up to the Constitution. Shame on you. If anybody, anybody would cheat you on this matter of attempted genocide in Ethiopia, in which proudly the government, its army, is trying its best without any outside interference to control. But now, as a citizen, patriot, honest people of the world, we should help them and we should stop the immigrants who were unreasonably emboldened because they got a bit fatter, bigger, and a bit well fed, but not well trained still. They pretend. This should stop. We come here to take the civilization, the goodness, the civility, and the legality here, and improve our country and our people, not to abuse the democracy here. While we are cowardice at home, why do we be bold here in London? Because these people cannot talk with me for 30 minutes, I can tell you, because I know I can squeeze them. I can disprove many of their cases within 30 minutes. I tell, I repeat, many of these fake migrants, economic migrants, who turn to be politicians and activists who are asking for somebody who has done a crime to be released, I can investigate them or question them 30 minutes and I can prove them they are wrong because they cannot with, the, with you, the, with the British or the Europeans, or Europeans, you see the people are much more nicer than me, but me, I'm not a nice man, I'm a right man, I call myself. Thank you, you people, I love you. Share it, take it to Canada, take it to Minneapolis, take it to any police station. I am responsible for this video because I don't have any other power. I don't have a lawyer, I don't have a television, I don't have big money to talk big, and I don't like to have big followers. I don't lie, and they lie. Look at it, Juhar is, Juhar's numbers on Facebook is because he uses religion. I don't use it. My name is Jamal Muhammad. I don't use it. Why do I use it? I'm enough. He uses clan. Sometimes he's that clan. Sometimes he's this clan. It is in between that he increases his number. And that is, as a medical doctor, you don't fall down to that standard. I've got a conscience and I've got a standard. He has no standard. His standard is money and power. And he galloped all over the place. And finally, Give a, long, give a man a long rope, he hungers himself, he hungered himself, and in a prison. I spent there 10 years and I've never taken an advantage of anybody else, but I just became wiser. That's why I'm just getting the courage to talk against my own people. So girls, ladies, gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I'm talking this video for all of you to use it in the fight against terrorism against our country. It is even, I cannot prove Al-Qaeda to be, or Taliban to be, much more terrorist than this. I can I repeat it, it's not fake. I cannot, I can prove what is happening against the Ethiopian government is much more terrorism than what is with Taliban or Al-Qaeda. Much more evidential, much more factual, but the world is not interested because they didn't attack him.
There is terrorism against our country. There is terrorism against Ethiopia. The disintegration is not in the interest of the West because you get migration, immigration, and confusion. I am conservative in how do I look at migration and prevention is better than this very struggle on on, on, on immigration, prevent the collapse of the country and the attempted genocide. The government has much done much more than any government in the world with that very intensity of troubles encircling the government. Help, understand, and put a stop to the tags on the streets and the media. They should be controlled what they are doing because they don't know their language. I know their language every day. They are saying, let us cleanse, let somebody be. Who created an earth after all? I'm living here because God created the earth and I'm living here legally. I repeat it, I'm living here legally. Who can stop me from living anywhere else so long I'm legal? Who stops? Who owns land? Who owns land? Nobody. Just the legality, formality, for the sake of conformity and common sense, peace and order. And these fake people, they are thinking even they have begged the land as if they are gods. Because they don't have the understanding. Now, that is the argument we put forward. Who did your land for you there? Everybody can live anywhere so long as it's legal. That is the way the world is taking care of us. That is why here. That is why they are in Canada. So this is not an aid for ethnic cleansing. And all what has they burned people alive. I know much more than I'm talking. While I was in a prison for 10 years, I let me not be pushed into talking that. Nobody knows I'm the extent of a crime. Even the political leaders don't know it. Even the leaders don't know what was done. Many of them, many of them were done really not by organizations it is because they were not recruiting, training properly, and so anybody would do anything. It doesn't go to the leadership really responsibility. Many of them, they do it on their own. And hence, let me stop it here and use this video for good. And the very reason I did this video is for any person, because I can be contacted on telephone. I can leave my telephone, it can contact me on WhatsApp or on uh, whatever Facebook, and then I will respond in a responsible, civilized way. Let them put a stop to the tags. We don't need a television like OMN to be listened. We can stop this thing. We have emboldened crowds of coward, whom I know them in a battlefield, in a prison. I know them like this. I've palpated their heartbeat at each and every corner, when it is good, when it is bad. These are not good. As, as, they are not as brave as they look like in London when they were in a prison or if they would be in somewhere in front of a lawful African man. They don't look like that. They were just very small creatures who ask for an excuse. But here, they use the video talking with the police as an oxygen. Even when the police is talking to them decently, do you know what they say? They say, look at, we are winning, we are beating. They encourage to incite more. They use the video taken with the police to incite more, telling them that, look at, we have closed down the embassies. Because the police is so lawful and disciplined, they are talking and they are showing, <laughs> and they are encouraging another touch to do the same. So let them do what is right, not what is nice, because the, the political correctness of the policeman with people who are encouraging killing at home is killing life at home. All lives matter, whether European or African or Ethiopian. The UK police, the United States police should not be politically correct with people who are encouraging ethnic strife in Ethiopia. Thank you.